On today's episode, China is heading back to the moon, Starship is prepped for flight test number three, New Glenn goes vertical, and Jeff Bezos is about to buy the United Launch Alliance. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation has released a new blueprint for space operations in 2024 and beyond, with the country now targeting a record 100 orbital launches this year, including two lunar missions and two brand new rocket designs. The Chinese government space program is targeting 70 launches that will deploy more than 290 spacecraft into orbit, while the remaining 30 will be launches from China's growing commercial rocket industry. This is a steep increase over the country's previous launch record, set in 2023, with 67 orbital flights, 50 being government and 17 commercial. This information comes from China's Blue Book, which is a document released on February 26th and contains an overview of the country's planned activities in outer space. Of course, the big story here is China's next play on the moon. We've seen a lot of either failed or partially successful moon landing attempts over the past year, our now sideways friend Odysseus being just the latest example, but China is set to take their shot at a lunar landing in May 2024. While many have faltered on the moon these past few years, China has been killing it up there. Their Chang'e 4 mission completed the first robotic exploration of the moon's far side, then Chang'e 5 achieved a sample return from the near side of the moon, bringing back the first moon rocks since the 1970s. Now, Chang'e 6 will bring it all together with a sample return from the far side of the moon, another first. Chang'e 6 will target a landing in a southern portion of the moon's Apollo crater, located within the South Pole Aitken Basin, which is a gigantic ancient impact crater. The lander will attempt to collect 2,000 grams of material, both scooped from the surface and collected by a drill. This is a pretty big deal because it's thought that material from beneath the moon's crust is accessible in the Spa Basin, and analysis of such material could provide new insights into the history of the moon, and by extension the Earth and wider solar system. Now, while we are talking about a Chinese moon takeover, they will not be doing this alone, and Chang'e 6 is actually carrying a wide range of international payloads, and the sample material is going to be shared around the world. France is providing the detection of outgassing radon instrument, which will detect radon outgassing from the lunar crust. Sweden will contribute the negative ions at the lunar surface payload. An Italian passive laser retro reflector will also be on board. And the IceCube Q CubeSat for Pakistan is also part of the mission. Samples collected by Chang'e 6 will initially be available to Chinese scientists and institutions before being opened to research proposals internationally. Ahead of Chang'e 6, China will be deploying a new lunar relay satellite into a high orbit around the moon. The Chui Chiao 2 is set to launch in March and will offer communication support for Chang'e 6. Since the far side of the moon is obviously never visible from the Earth, we can't send radio transmissions directly from point to point. But the new satellite will go out beyond the moon and act as a relay station. The Chui Chiao 2 will then go on to support the upcoming Chang'e 7 mission in 2026 and Chang'e 8 in 2028. China's Blue Book also reminds us that a crude lunar landing remains a top priority for the nation, with a target still being set to put Chinese taikonauts on the moon before the year 2030. We also have confirmation on two new Chinese launch vehicles that will debut in 2024. The Long March 12 is an incredibly secretive new project developed by the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology. What we do know is that this will be China's widest rocket to date, with a diameter of 3.8 meters, wider than the 3.35 meter diameter of most Chinese rockets. Long March 12 will be a two-stage rocket, more than 60 meters tall, and it will be powered by six liquid kerosene engines. So we are looking at something comparable in size and design to the SpaceX Falcon 9, just with a bit less power and no reusable capability. The second new rocket from China is the Long March 6C, which is just a Long March 6A with the solid fuel side boosters removed. Do you ever have so many browser tabs open that they all just begin to swirl together into a giant chaotic sea of tabs with no way of possibly knowing which one is what until you become helplessly lost and adrift on the tab C? 
Well, let me show you how Opera made a solution to this problem to rescue us from the sea of tabs Opera has come up with tabfulness. It is like mindfulness, but for browsing. It's the peaceful silence that descends when you are not bombarded with stupid ads, not digging through endless pages, but getting instant answers from Aria, Opera's browser AI. Opera has built an island, a tab island. Let me show you how this works. So here's what my browser typically looks like on a day of catching up on space news. I'll have six or seven different websites open with so many tabs on the go that I couldn't possibly tell you what's what until I start to activate my tab islands. Check this out. With just a few clicks, I can start to collapse the tab C into these color-coded tab islands. Now I can quickly check in on NASA, pull up the articles I liked on Universe Today, or dive right back into the latest space news, all while keeping my browser window beautifully organized. Of course, the best feature of all is that Opera is totally free to use and shockingly easy to get set up. So take my advice and give Opera a try for yourself. I really think you're going to like it. A truck full of explosives has been spotted driving into the SpaceX Starbase launch site, which is a positive sign that Starship Flight Number 3 is imminent. Of course, the explosives in question are specifically for use in the Starship's flight termination system. That's the thing that makes the rocket blow up when things don't go as planned. We've seen FTS used on both of the Starship flights so far, and hopefully that trend does not continue. But this is a good sign that we will see the next pairing of ship and booster ready for launch within the next two weeks, maybe three at the most. We know that SpaceX has big plans for this year that will ramp up the launch frequency at Starbase. At a press conference last week, FAA Administrator Calvin Coleman revealed that SpaceX is pushing for at least nine launches from Starbase Texas in 2024, calling the plan, quote, a pretty aggressive launch schedule this year. Coleman went on to confirm that in spite of what you might hear, the FAA is in full support of SpaceX and Starship, saying, quote, we've been talking to SpaceX constantly around the clock, coming together and trying to figure out how we do this. We are invested with the company, and so we will work with them to get them back going as soon as they can. Blue Origin's New Glenn orbital rocket has gone vertical at Launch Complex 36 for the very first time, and the company has confirmed that this is the real deal. The rocket you are looking at right now will be going to space later this year, or at least attempting to. Blue Origin says that the first New Glenn will be put through its paces in the coming weeks and months with, quote, several demonstrations of cryogenic fluid loading, pressure control, and the vehicle's venting systems. The only thing that New Glenn is still missing would be its seven BE-4 engines. The company says that the first flight engines are being hot-fired at their testing sites in Alabama and Texas before shipping out to the Cape. Blue Origin has also said that there are several New Glenn vehicles currently in production that will serve a range of clients from NASA to Telesat, of course Amazon's own Project Kuiper satellite internet constellation, and the New Glenn is also being certified by Space Force for national security missions. We know that New Glenn is slated for at least one mission this year. NASA's twin spacecraft Escapade Mars mission is targeting a launch date no earlier than August 2024. Blue Origin has also made the claim that whenever the first flight of New Glenn does happen, they will be attempting a booster return and landing on an autonomous barge in the ocean, so it should make for a great show regardless of the outcome. And continuing on with Blue Origin news, we have our strongest indication yet that the Jeff Bezos-owned aerospace company will be acquiring the United Launch Alliance from Lockheed Martin and Boeing. The massive business deal would essentially slingshot Blue Origin from the back of the pack to the forefront of space exploration, with the biggest asset transfer from ULA obviously being their brand new Vulcan Centaur rocket, an extremely versatile heavy lift vehicle with one successful test flight under its belt, and more than 70 launch contracts already on the books including 38 missions for Amazon's Kuiper Satellite Network. And then there's all of the launch infrastructure, rocket testing and manufacturing infrastructure that it comes along with, plus the approximately 2,700 experienced aerospace workers currently employed by ULA. Now, of course, none of the major players involved are saying anything official, but two anonymous sources speaking to Ars Technica have said that they expect the sale to be announced within a month or two. 
we also have some market signals that Mr. Bezos is gearing up for a big move. Bezos recently sold $2.4 billion in Amazon stock and disclosed that he could sell an additional $8 to $9 billion in stock over the next 12 months. Although there are no confirmed values, there has been speculation in the launch industry that ULA may be sold for somewhere between $2 and $3 billion, so Bezos could be looking at buying the company outright and then putting a massive investment on the table to integrate ULA into Blue Origin.